so I made a game. That's right. I'm a gamer. Apparently, we have this subject in school called MMINTDS, Mintidus as I would call it, but it's short for Interactive Media Design. At first, I thought it was Interface Design because of the letters, but no, no, it, it, it wasn't. I thought of that for months and I only found out now. Now, because I thought it was Interface Design, I had this preconceived notion that I might make UI as we were learning the basics of code. In the first few weeks, we had flowcharts, pseudo code, different kinds of loops, codes that involved math like this one. A computer rewards its employees every month with commission based on their total sales. So we just need to prompt the user to input the number of units sold and the price of the product and then it calculates how much commission they'll get based on this chart. So basically, if they have over 15,000 pesos of sales, they will get 20% of their sales. So if we run this code, let's say I sold 5 units and each unit cost me uh, 10,000. My total sales was 50,000. I get a 20% commission rate and my commission was 10,000 pesos. That easy. Wow, coding. And just like that, with a snap, we were taken to this browser-based software called Play Canvas to develop a game. Well, we didn't know what to do because we didn't really have any background in coding other than HTML probably. But they taught us the basics in Play Canvas, like movement, making sprite sheets, making collisions, destroying an object when you hit it. Other than that, we were on our own. So when we needed help, you know what we did? Forums, baby! In this video, I will show you my whole experience in making the game. It might be a long video, but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. So since they already taught us movement, all I had to do was make a sprite sheet for a main character. I really wanted it to have a dark, sinister, but cute look. So I just went for this demon thing. I was inspired by some free assets by this guy. You can check him out in the description below if you're interested in that sort of thing. So in Play Canvas, you can separate your sprite sheets accordingly so that it animates what you want to animate based on the frames you have. I did some math doing the margins in Photoshop. I'm basically a math whiz. Oh, and I also made some cover art for the game along with a logo type. I thought it looked okay. It's okay. So the next thing they taught us was being able to collect stuff. So I made this soul animation. Here's the code for a colliding function so that when it collides, it gets destroyed. Then it adds one to a counter and the counter turns into a string that is shown on the screen. It's pretty neat. I also got sounds from Dark Souls because I didn't know how to replicate the sound. And I also added some creepy dungeon music. So now it has this atmosphere. It's it's pretty creepy. So then on, I tried to make a map and I envisioned what every room should be. I drawn it on my notebook first and made concept work in Photoshop. And then I made assets for several days to fill it up. And since I made it in Photoshop, I then have to make all the assets into a different photoshop file to make them into grids so that i can put those grid files into play canvas so that i can cut them up so that they can all be separate sprites it was a long long process and now comes the hard part that wasn't the hard part okay to keep my demon boy constrained to this area where i want it to be I have to have walls that prevent the player from going elsewhere. So I added collisions to every single one of them, which was horrible. I hated doing this. I had to like duplicate and duplicate and duplicate. Like there were so many layers. It took a lot of time, but eventually everything turned out okay. And I also like hid different souls behind the assets so that, you know, you would have to 
sort of find them but you know it's pretty easy i didn't make it too hard because then it would just be frustrating so to finish the game the player has to reach this green soul in the ritual room i wanted things to be a little interesting so i added several doors there that had different functions like for example you would need to have a certain amount of this or you would need a key etc since you needed a key to enter the door there was a bug where the key counter just kept going down the more you hit the door. So I had to go fix that by adding one when the counter reaches negative one. So then it will always just end up being zero. I also had this other door that was purple hinting to the color of souls. I animated number 25 at the bottom of the floor so that a player can figure out that they need 25 souls to be able to pass through making exploration of the map a task to be done. So I also made a starting screen to make it feel more like a game. So yeah, I had to animate the typography, making the buttons, and it had a cool chain, which I was really proud of. My girlfriend Jean was able to figure out most of the UI stuff, so I had to learn from her. She helped me with the codes there. While making this, I was able to solidify some lore to the game. The rapture has begun. Yet a demon named Charon, who was once an angel, is deeply concerned of the souls that were wrongfully cast down by God. Charon takes on a journey in the realm- Oh, I should say it in an old guy voice. Charon takes on a journey in the realm of the underworld. To save souls that are deemed of a horrible fate, will Charon save all souls? <laughs> was that good? <laughs> I thought it was pretty cool and funny that a demon was concerned about souls wrongfully cast down by God. In a way, I wanted it to have a moral standing that no matter what you look or are perceived to be, the one is automatically inherently evil. And I also named the demon after Charon, the Greek mythology guy. From this point on, I felt like the game was lacking foundation. I wasn't feeling like immersed with the story, the character or the character or the world. So, so in the last few days before our deadline, I decided to make a new map for a tutorial level. The dungeon just felt really cramped. So I wanted a map that felt Read. That felt big, so I decided on a forest, mainly because I could just, you know, copy-paste the same tree everywhere. So once I finished the concept in Photoshop, I made animations and transferred it in Play Canvas. I, I, had, I had to make like a lot of collisions, but in the end, it looked pretty cool. It was, it was pretty dope. I made a dialogue system to tell the players about movement and collecting souls. So there's this like tutorial system at the start to give players a sense of direction. I had a lot of trouble with this and I had to like make a script for every single one of the dialogue screens, which was a pain, but it eventually worked. And there are cute little but buttons at the bottom to move through each of them. I added characters in the first map as well that when you bump into, they give you a dialogue pop-up. I thought that was really cool for immersion. I was able to find some code that could teleport the entity in a specific XYZ axis like in Minecraft. So I didn't have to load a different scene for it to take place and it worked really well. Oh, and I, I added like a teleport sound so that when you touch the statue, it will just take you to the new place. It will teleport you to an XYZ location, which is the dungeon. And as you can see, the, it also plays a sound. So from then on, when I finished that, I wanted the game to have replayability and mystery. So I decided to make alternate endings, making it more interesting. So if you want to play the game and you want to find it out for yourself, skip to this time. And if you want to know right away, then I'm just going to tell you right now. So I decided that when the player collects all existing souls in the game, that they would get teleported to a different place. 
and unlock the alternate ending. I didn't want this to be super obvious, so I hid some souls in some areas to make sure not everyone just gets all the souls. And if you're a player that likes exploring and finding out if there are any secrets, you can discover this clue when you hit this bulletin board. I'm not spoiling it, but I was really happy with how mysterious it, it was turning out. Lastly, I made another ending and it involves pots. So I'm not gonna spoil it either so that you get to experience the game for yourself. And that's it. It, it was really fun making this. It felt great having other people play it and find out the secrets for themselves. If you want to play the game for yourself, I will leave a link in the description um, for you to try it out. And you can open it up in your browser. It will play just fine. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. And as always, thanks for watching till the end. I appreciate it.